Greetings, friends, and welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. It's Friday morning, October 26, 2018. And uh, today I thought I would uh, cover just a few uh, what I consider end times headlines. And it's one of those podcasts that's kind of off the cuff. Uh, I've actually been sick this week, and I um, didn't have anything prepared this morning, but I thought, well, I bet I can put something together. And uh, there's some headlines that I've been saving uh, throughout the week that uh, I think relate to end times and end time prophecy, and I thought, hey, let's just cover the, the headlines and uh, take a look at some of these today. And as you know, my favorite topic in regards to the last days is artificial intelligence and genetic modification and there's no end there's absolutely no end to all of this to the amount of this that's in the news every single day in regards to artificial intelligence and genetic modification it's mind-boggling so let's cover a few headlines shall we uh, this one's from CBN News. It says, Why implanted microchips in humans could go mainstream sooner than later? Here's what it says. It says, Experts admit that so far getting humans to adopt microchip implants has been a tough sell. Many Christians re- reject them because of the concern that they could be a prelude to the mark of the beast which Revelation chapter 13 says will be a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. But the marketing tipping point for implanting chips, writes the Atlantic, will come when they become so useful they're hard to refuse, when their benefits outweigh their anxieties about them. It could happen sooner than you think. Right now, thousands of people in countries like Germany and Sweden have already opted to get chipped for easier financial transactions. Seven Becker, head of I Am Robot, tells Euronews that 2,000 to 3,500 people in Germany have implanted a microchip under their skin as a substitute for key cards to the gym, office, and house. Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for years. Uh, thousands of people are, are becoming chipped. Now, is the, is the chip the mark of the beast? No, I don't think so, but... I mean, uh, the chip in its current form. I don't believe it is. Um, I sure wouldn't put one in my hand. Um, but it, I do believe it's a prelude. It's a, it's a conditioning. You know, people are going to get used to augmenting themselves. And as I talked last week, and I think I have a good argument, that, you know, the Mark of the Beast, it, it's more than just a chip that allows you to buy and sell or a mark that allows you to buy and sell. Uh, it's also an allegiance, I believe, to the Antichrist. Um, in addition to that, like I like I talked about last week, whatever it is, and I need I need to just look this up. Um, uh, if you take the mark, let's just go look at Revelation thirteen real quick. Maybe I can find it quickly. Uh, while I'm talking at the same time, if you take the mark, you you cannot be redeemed. Um, uh, let's see. L- let's just look at what it talks. To. Let's start by looking at what it says about the mark. And it says that he's going to do great wonders. Let's start with verse thirteen. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven and on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. And he gave, and he had, and there's so much, there's so much end times prophecy in just that one statement, but let's stay focused here. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. 
So there's there's this idea that you have to worship not only the beast itself, but the image of the beast that is able to speak or do whatever. So I don't know if it's going to be some genetic um, petri dish creation, if it's going to be some form of artificial intelligence, but whatever it is, it's going to be an image of the beast in some manner. It can speak and all that. And people will be caught, forced to worship it. And then it says in verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, so it doesn't matter what your social status or your financial status is, to receive a mark in, in the right hand, which I always thought that that wording was interesting, in their right hand. Does that mean inside? Like the chip? Or in their foreheads? And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that understandeth count the number of the beast, for the number of the man, his number of a man, his number is six hundred, three score and six. So, in addition to that, um, it, the, the scriptures also say that if those who have the those who have taken the mark of the beast, um. Their burning will go up before God and his angels forever and ever. There is no redemption after you take the mark of the beast. Very, very clear. And, sorry for the silence, I was actually trying to find that, but I'm going to move on from that for right now. Um, the reason why I even bring that up is is because I think that, again, that there's more to the mark of the beast. I think it's going to do some type of genetic alteration. But either way, we see, we're seeing the prelude for this. You know, Right now it's about convenience. It's about uh, security. You know, it gets you into your computer, gets you into your car, gets you into your house. Um, get you, you know, into all these things. Uh, you can make a financial transaction. Um, all these things. It, it, it's convenience and ease of life for now to become uh, normalized. But then what happens after that is when the more nefarious stuff starts being implemented. Uh, let's move on to another headline talking still uh, again I, I point this stuff out to show you that genetic modification is real that is happening uh, this is from the Daily Star China has cloned 20 different dog breeds will humans be next a 12 year old schnauzer has become the latest canine to undergo the process which involves taking a skin sample from the animal Wang Yingqing, who is the dog's owner, showed off the puppy to its father clone named Daodu in a recently released snap. However, despite the dogs having the, having the identical DNA, scientists have said they may have different temperaments, as this is shaped by its upbringing, according to the Chinese news. There now have been 200 different types of dogs cloned in the country. And, you know, I don't know how they're doing this. Uh, let me finish the last paragraph here. And it says, And the last month the world came closer to carrying out mass human cloning. Check this out. Japanese experts revealed that they made human egg cells from blood using a cutting-edge stem cell testing technique. Although these eggs cannot be grown into babies as they are too immature, the research is paving the way for this type of experiment. The team made the egg cells by using blood to create induced proponent stem cells, which were then inserted into artificial ovaries. I'm telling you, friends, the Nephilim are coming. You're going to see this in your lifetime. Second Ezra says women in the last days will give birth to monsters. That uh, one-year-olds will dance and sing. And it sounds absurd. 
uh, but we're they're successfully cloning animals. They're su- successfully splicing DNA. All your food, everything you eat has been genetically modified. And let me just tell you, it's not for the benefit of your health. Quite the contrary. It's for the opposite. It's destroying your health. Um, think about all the diseases and things that weren't prevalent 30 years ago. All the allergies and things that weren't prevalent. I mean, every kid now is allergic to like 10 things. You know how many things I was allergic to? None. What do you think? I want you guys. I want you guys to open your eyes. You know the the hardest thing for people to awaken to this is because it's so evil, so nefarious that most people just can't fathom that our wonderful governments and these corporations and things would actually do such evil. But they absolutely are. You know, the world's going to be in such a in such bad shape, the scriptures say, in the last days that if God doesn't intervene, there'll be no flesh left alive. That's how bad it's going to get. Jesus said it'll be like a time there's never been before uh, in the past or in the future. It's going to be the worst of times possible. And I'm not saying this thing, it's these things because I want people to be scared. I'm telling you this because you are children of the light. You are Christians. You need to be aware and awake to these things because your job is to be the salt and the light to this world. And the world is dying. And Christians are hiding. They've taken their light and they've put it under a bowl because they don't understand what's going on. Um, they're naive about what's going on, most Christians. You know, a lot of Christians listen to this broadcast and hear me say the word Nephilim and they think I've just lost my marbles. But that's because they've never really studied Genesis chapter 6. And the minute that they start to be awakened to it at all, they go and they find some other Bible teacher that teaches them that, oh, it's just the sons of Seth, you know, don't listen to those wacky people who teach what the Bible actually teaches. Not only that, the Dead Sea Scrolls are littered with information about this including the book of Enoch, including the book of Jubilees, um, and many other books. Um, And the Bible itself speaks about this plenty. It's just, unfortunately, I think pastors are are trained up to to teach the scriptures in a certain way. They, you know, here in the United States of Babylon, and this information isn't taught to the congregations. Or it's deemed not important, but it is. It's extremely important uh, because we are living in these days, and you need you know you need to understand what's going to happen so that you're not cut off guard, and so that you can speak truth and hope into a dying world. You know, I've been thinking about this a lot about, and I'm I'm going completely off track here, but I've just been thinking a lot about what's my job as a Christian. You know, um, I think I've been viewing, you know, I look at all the problems with the church and you guys have heard it, right? For years, uh, me just sounding off about Western Christianity and with good reason, but I think, but I've been thinking lately, I've been doing this study with our small group letters to the churches by Francis Chan. And it's really convicted me. And I've just been thinking, you know, you know who the problem is? It's everyone sitting in the congregation, including myself. It all starts with ourselves and our attitude about why we show up to church and about what our role is in the body of Christ. Um, Understanding that we're all part of the body of Christ and we all have different functions and different roles and, and God doesn't want us to all see all things the same way. Yes, we're to be like minded and sound in doctrine. Uh, but he's given us different passions and different goals and different uh, roles within the body. And my role happens to be, you know, teaching the scriptures and talking about these last days. You know, I'm not, so, I, you know, God hasn't called me to be a pastor of a church. Um, he hasn't called me to be, you know, so far, this is what he's called me to be for years now. A Bible teacher on the internet because there's a famine in the land a famine of 
of not of food and water, but of the word of the Lord. There's a famine of truth. And so that's what I've been called to do. And you may be called to do something completely different. We've all been given a measure of talent and of faith. And, you know, let me just go to, I know I've gotten off track here, but I just want to go to, um, let's see, Ephesians chapter 4. And maybe I should just end with reading some of this. Let me read some of Ephesians chapter 4, talking about the unity in the body of Christ. King James Bible, verse 1, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of vocation wherewith you were called, with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. And of and enduring and devouring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as you are called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism the god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all now listen to this but to unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of christ wherefore he saith when he ascendeth up on high, and he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave, here's, what, here's the point I'm trying to give. He gave us all some talents. We need to discover what they are, and we need to use them. And they're not all the same. You know, if you think about the body of uh, the human body, the finger, your pinky finger doesn't have the same role as your bicep, as your foot. And would the hand dare say to the foot, I don't need you? Of course not. It's all part. It all has to be there to function. Verse 11, he gave some apostles. He gave some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the, pervert, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for edifying the body of Christ, till we all come in unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto a measure of the statute, stature of the fullness of Christ. See, we've all been given these gifts, we've all been called to these different things, it's our job to seek Christ and find out what it is that he wants us to do and then take whatever that thing is, whatever that gift is, and use it to further the kingdom of Christ. That's our only, and that's our job, is to share the love and truth of Christ, of Jesus Christ. And I'm trying to get that into my head. And when I say I'm trying to get that into my head, I'm, tr I'm not trying just to intellectually know that, but I'm trying to just embrace that with with my whole heart and actually understand that in such a way that it flows out of me and becomes reality because there's so many things i have to admit about the scriptures that i intellectually know but it's not flowing out of me and so that's it that's a change i'm trying to make because of, you know we're talking about we're moving into the last days and things are going to get i keep saying things are going to get crazy things are absolutely crazy right now madness it's maddening what's happening. It's maddening that this level of deception that's taking place as we're moving into our elections for November. The things that the nefarious, evil, uh, you call them world leaders, are trying to pull, and it's working, is unfathomable. The lies and the deception. And I'm not going to get into all that. Go watch Rick Wiles if you want all that news like that. Again, he's called to do that. I'm not. Um, and he and his show does a good job of that. Go watch it. Uh, there's the Hagman and Hagman Report. Um, you know, or True News. Um, and then I sometimes I listen to uh, Ted Brower. Those three guys do a good job of covering actual news and political information. Those three podcasts. If you want that information. You know, we're talking about 
the last days, our roles, my role here, he gave some apostles, prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. I think that he's given me the role of the Bible teacher. And I really need to embrace that and, and to do that. Let me read one more verse here. Well, let me read 13 and 14. It says, Till we come into unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man, into a measure of stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth no more be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. In other words, we need to be firm in our beliefs and understanding into the true doctrine. Right now, there's a lot of cults, a lot of movements that are carrying people away and deceiving people, convincing them that they have to... to, to become Jews again and uh, and all kinds of things don't be carried away by these don't be tossed to and fro carried away with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fittily joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase the body unto the edifying of itself in love. I'm going to have to end the podcast there, my friends, because I am out of time. These strange things are happening. DNA to modification, chip implants like we covered today. Remember that you've been called for a purpose. You didn't just get called to just to be saved. There's a role for your life, and you need to discover what that is. And if you don't know what it is, you need to continue to pray every single day and seek God's face for wisdom and understanding and find out how you can be a part, an active part of the body. And it may not be huge. It may be huge. You know, it just depends on what God's called you to do, but we've all been called to do a part. It might be something that's very local, very local in, in a small community of people. Or it might be very broad, like the podcast that I'm doing that reaches, you know, larger numbers. It could be you, you participating in your small group, um, you know, a group of five to ten people once a week, talking about these things. Maybe you start an end time small group in your house and you invite three or four friends or family members or something. Trust me, this stuff has a domino effect. You, you impact one person with the truth. The truth will set them on fire and they'll spread it on to others. I've seen it happen, friends. All right, this has been a random podcast and I apologize for that. I didn't know what I was going to talk about when I sat down or if I was even going to do one. So this hopefully was spirit led and it hopefully has touched you and blessed you in some way. I'm out of time. Peace and grace be with all of you. Have a great weekend. And until next time, God bless.